Hello, everyone, and welcome to our very first political candidate interview here on this channel. I'm thrilled to introduce our special guest today, Eric Weekneck, the sheriff of Berks County and a candidate for Pennsylvania's 5th District in the State House of Representatives. Thank you, Eric, for joining me today. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate this. Yeah, so, um, you know, a couple months till November now, very big election um, across the country. You're running for the 5th District um, in the State House. So I just want to know a little bit more about your background. Um, you spend most of your career in law enforcement. Um, but what else is TA? What are some hobbies? What are some other leadership positions, things that you want to let your citizens know? Well, one of the things that I uh, really enjoy is obviously the law enforcement portion of it. Um, in that capacity, I am also was elected several times to the Pennsylvania Sheriff's Association as the secretary treasurer. Uh, that was a very big deal for me because I was elected by the fellow sheriffs throughout the uh, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania to lead the organization as far as secretary treasurer and also, you know, helping to raise money to keep that organization moving. All right. So, well, how, what, how do you think your time as a sheriff, you know, will help you be a representative for Pennsylvania? Well, I think it's going to be a big help with constituent services. Uh, when I was elected sheriff back in 07, I got elected and I took office in 08. One of my top priorities was to make it easier to deal with the sheriff's office. Uh, one of the things that I stress upon my staff, uh, especially my civilian staff, is that they are there working for the people. The people that come into them uh, to, to ask their questions and get direction uh, are basically the ones paying their salary. Uh, one of the things that annoys me most with government agencies when you go to the DMV or something like that are the people who seem disgusted with their job. Like when you ask them a question and you might be at the wrong place and they get annoyed and they go, you know, well, it's down the hall, you're at the wrong place. And I emphasize that with my staff is that, you know, we're there for the people and the people are paying us. So you need to be respectful. You need to help those people and guide them in whatever they need, even if it doesn't mean necessarily that they're there for the sheriff's office. They could be there and need to go to the bathonetary's office or the clerk of court's office, help them, direct them, and be courteous at all times. So, um, Branson, off that, like, what, what was there a specific thing in your sheriff career, though, real quick, that you think, you know, you really cherished um, that made you really commit to public service um, to begin with? Yeah, one of the things was uh, the changes that I made in a license to carry. Uh, the sheriff in all six, well, 66 counties out of 67, the sheriff is responsible for issuing a license to carry a firearm. The only exception to that is the Philadelphia, where the chief of police does it. Uh, I was born and raised in a very rural part of our county, and it was out in Kutztown, Pennsylvania. And I know that whenever my parents growing up had to deal with the, uh, the courthouse, uh, my father would have to take a day off of work. They would have to drive to the courthouse uh, because it was a 45 minute drive. So one of the things that I changed was to make it easier for the people to deal with us. I opened up an airport substation so that way they didn't have to drive into the city, pay to park, go through metal detectors. And I also opened up five remote locations at municipal buildings throughout our county, strategically located where nobody would have more than a 20 minute drive to re re uh, renew their license or to get a new license to carry. And that was a campaign promise I made and it was completed within the first year. And within the first term, and it's been going ever since, and it's been a very well received uh, change that I made for the office. So you have a lot of experience um, in public service. You'll be going up against um, Heather Hanna in November. You know what differenti differentiates you from your opponent, but also just a Democratic um, candidate in general. Well, I mean, one of the things I don't want to focus on is you know my opponent. Uh, you know. If, She's good, bad, what she can do, what she can't do, anything like that. I want to focus on what I want to do as a state rep. And obviously, my concerns are lowering property taxes. I know that in Berks County, an initiative has been for years, for probably 20 years, was the elimination of property taxes. Uh, it seemed to lose momentum over the last several years. I know it's a huge goal and a huge step to get done. But someone needs to look at it and someone needs to carry that. As I mentioned with the Second Amendment, I'm very pro-Second Amendment. I do not want to see what's happening continue in Harrisburg right now under the, the, uh, the Democratic leadership where all they seem to be doing is passing anti-gun bills. Uh, I mean, the Constitution is very clear. The Pennsylvania Constitution even is, is even more clear on your right to carry a firearm. 
And also, one of the things I hear in the 5th Legislative District is we're comprised, comprised of a lot of small businesses. And the small businesses are getting regulated to death to the point where some of them are even going out of business because of the fact that you have all these local ordinances and changes and red tape that they got to go through. And all they're trying to do is, you know, make a living, be there for, you know, their, their, uh, their businesses, be there for the people. And it seems like the government is making it harder and harder for them to do that. So, well, it seems like you're a big, um, supporter of the second amendment that's going to be a big yes. key issue for you um if elected so i would want to know like what are some other key issues i know i'm in pennsylvania now with a democratic governor a democratic house um a big problem around my area i live in rural pennsylvania also i'm represented by a republican representative um the big part is spending a lot of spending um is that an issue for you of course and you know just of course any other issues you have it's a huge issue uh when you look at it right now i mean we're in july and we still don't have a budget we don't have a budget. Uh, the governor's budget, that proposal that he did was basically looking at all the revenues that we built up over the last several years. And his idea is to spend them, spend those, let's give this money out. Uh, and then we can tax our way out of it in the future when we need that money. That's the wrong way to do business. If, if a business would, would uh, have that philosophy, they would be bankrupt in a year or less because, you know, it just doesn't work, but yet it seems like that's the thing that, that a lot of the Democrats want to do, especially the leadership that we have now, is to, well, the money's there, let's spend it, let's spend it, and we can then tax again in the future moving forward. So a big part of being a, a representative is making sure you're, you know, you're representing the ideas of the people who voted you in and just the people overall that you represent. Um, you know, how, what are some ways that you're going to stay connected with your constituents and ensure that their voices are heard? That's huge. And uh, that, again, I will be working for the people, not only the people in the 5th Legislative District, but the people in the Commonwealth. Uh, my voice will be for the 5th Legislative District and their concerns, but uh, town hall meetings, uh, if somebody calls, they're going to get a call right back personally from me. Uh, I know that, you know, the newsletters that you can put out talking about legislation that's coming up, getting feedback on where your supporters and, and, and your residents and constituents feel on where your vote should go and what would help them the best. And uh, that's very important. That's something, even though I've been with the sheriff for 16 years, that's something I never stopped is constituent services, responding to people, getting them the answers that they need and giving them the help that they need in whatever problem that arises. So, and going off that now, how do you plan to work with other legislators, both, both within your party and then across the aisle to achieve um, your goals and the goals for the greater good? That's probably going to be my biggest concern. Uh, we have a very big uh, legislative body, uh, 203 members, probably one of the biggest in the country. And it seems like, uh, you know, right now there's more Democrats and Republicans by one. And it seems like there's a lot of butting heads. There's a lot of issues that don't get resolved because of the fact that, you know, they don't talk to each other. Uh, as sheriff, when I had a, an initiative that I wanted to complete, I would work with our county commissioners. I would work with the budget office. I would work with the human resources office. I would work with them one-on-one -on -one so that I could achieve that goal. And I want to take that to Harrisburg and at least open up dialogue that we can talk where we can, all right, we have issues on, you know, some legislation. We can work that out, but let's get the common sense legislation passed and done and then work on the issues that are a little bit more complex. And I think like, you know, arguing between two parties, it just at the end of the day, it hurts the voters. It hurts the the citizens at the end of the day. So, you know, without a question, the thing I want to see the most is just get back to, you know, just trying to work, do business, do what's best for the greater good, um, despite different opinions. You know what I mean? Yes. So I want to focus more on just some of your conservative ideas, conservative values in general. One mm -hmm. of the things I've noticed in our country today is just the decline in American and conservative values, not so much the political philosophy, but conservatism, conservatism in the family, religion and other values. You know, have you noticed this trend? And if so, how do you help um, restore that? Well, family values are, are huge. Uh, they're very important. And I think family values go back to your religion, no matter what religion it is, uh, keeping the family unit together. Uh, right now, one of our biggest crimes in the city of Reading is juveniles and getting into bad crowds, getting into to, uh, gangs. Uh, their issue right now is, you know, resolve it with a gun. 
uh, you know, fire some shots at somebody and, uh, you know, you're the cool guy with the gun that, that, you know, pulls it out when there's an issue. And that all comes down to family values. It really does. And that's where I think that we really need to focus on our society is to get the family unit back together. I agree. Uh, you know, so the GOP, they've, they've been losing a lot lately um, since about mm -hmm. 2016. We really have not won a big election, um, and especially in Pennsylvania. Uh, since we voted Biden in 2020, both lost the gubernatorial and the U.S. Senate race in 2022. On top of that, the de Democrats also hold the state house. So, you know, what do you think the GOP needs to do, um, specifically in Pennsylvania, to really start winning again? Do they have to start targeting targeting different voters, change some ideas? You know, what do you think the GOP needs to do? Well, I think uh, when it comes to the Republicans, it seems like we end up getting a lot of very, very good candidates in the primary. And instead of weeding those out prior to getting them on the ballot, I think we need to do what the Democrats do, where we decide what candidate we're going to push and have them push that candidate. Two years ago, we had some amazing candidates for U.S. Uh, Senate and for governor, and they all went against each other. They spent a lot of money. They damaged each other getting through the primary. Uh, when we ultimately had the winner, that winner went into November up against a Democratic candidate who was not in a primary, who was raising money and not spending it, and also giving them talking points on what they got beat up on in the primary. And they went into the general election damaged already. And that's something that I think we need to look at as a party to get over. It's tough because, I mean, a primary is, you know, that's what a primary is for, is to weed out, you know, and everyone has the right to run. But, you know, maybe try to work it out with the uh, the leadership or, or see who is the best candidate and then get behind that. I think we kind of went over that hurdle with uh, this race, with the, with the U.S. Senate race, and also with the Attorney General's office, where we seem to be not as damaged as we were a couple of years ago going into November. So 4th of July coming up on Thursday, you know, how's the campaign been going? You have any future big plans um, throughout the month of July and up until the election? Well, yeah, we're doing uh, we're doing door to door, uh, and that's been going very well. It's uh, it's a tough door to door district to do because it's so rural. Uh, you know, it's it's walking several miles to hit a couple doors, but it's important and answering the questions that the people have, reminding them why I'm running, and also to remind them to go out and vote. Uh, we have our campaign kickoff. It's it's called that, although we've been campaigning the whole time. July fifteenth. It's at the uh, Reading Airport, which is in the district, and that's where we're going to be getting all the people coming in, supporting the campaign, signing them up to help with door knocking, help with polls, uh, you know, anything else that they're interested in doing. So we're going to be kicking it off uh, in a couple Mondays from now. Great. Great to hear. So, well, Eric, I just want to thank you once again for your time. It was a quick interview. So everybody watching, I hope you got, you know, the basics for Eric. You know, you're, you're ready to vote for him if you're in his district. Um, I wish you the best of luck in November. Um, I'm really excited to see your name be called. Yes, I'm excited about the election. I truly am. Yeah.